I'm getting in the car and the chickens, the chickens are following me. <laughs> and she's a honky tonk lady. <laughs> All right, where's my bicycle here? Getting ready to head out. Road <laughs> the chickens. This is Kelly, who generously allowed me to crash at her, her and Ray's house because she had the deciding factor on whether I could or not. <laughs> she spent her life doing things for other people and she's doing something for me this morning. She's driving me up the grade. Look at all this construction. I feel stressed out because there's really nowhere for me to go with my bike. People be behind me like, get this chick off the road. She's in the way. Downtown Winchester. Oh, where's the rifle? Hanging up. Oh, there it is in the street. There's the Winchester. See the pistol? Oh, that's cool. And she grew up here at a population of 340 now. And there were 300. 300. And how many were in your class? 23. 23 people. One thing I love about being on the Indian reservations, they just really honor their past. They have their history posted along the road. There's railroad trestles, Lawyers Canyon, Lewis and Clark. Kelly dropped me off just past Craigmont and I found myself pedaling away from her, just giggling, giddy. My life, just the way things turn out, how being alone always transfers into not being alone. You know, people are always like, you're doing this by yourself, you're doing this by yourself. I'm thinking, I do a lot of things by myself, like most things by myself. I feel there's a benefit to it actually, because I think a lot of these experiences that I have are because I'm on my own. And I'm also very approachable, and I talk to people. I mean, that has something to do with it as well. So there I was in La Poix, leaving this gas station where this random guy decides to tell me not to take the road. Google map is telling me, and it was gonna be beautiful and kind of the same distance. And he's telling me not to because of people just getting later and just about camping. When it is farm after farm and they have a fence, if that's the setup, I mean, you could go to knock on someone's door and say, can I camp in your field? Which I guess if it came down to it, you know, your survival instinct comes out. You don't overthink, oh, what are they gonna think? Or is this right, is this wrong? You just survival. <laughs> I'm just winging it, I have no, no plans. When I was seeing the turnoff, you know, I felt as sort of this like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna change my route for a total stranger's advice. And I was torn. I remember just thinking, well, maybe something's supposed to happen because that's how my life always goes. And then there I am a mile before the climb and some guy coming home from work, he knew about the climb, he knew they were doing construction on it, and he also heard that there was gonna be bad weather probably up there because it was higher elevation, like really windy and bad. So he's thinking biking, windy, road construction, girl, it's getting later. So he turned around and came back, and that's when he shouted out of his window. And then when I was in the truck, and he's like, why don't you stay? And I was like, I wanna ask your wife first. It's so cute. He was adorable. Ray and Kelly were just awesome couple. Ray and I chatted, he told me story after story, and they were all fantastic. He's a great storyteller, and one just runs into the next, into the next, and he so adores his wife. He'll say a story about her, and he just chuckles, and she smiles, and it's just, it, it, it was the sweetest thing to witness. One of my favorite things about hanging out with them, watching their rapport. What's the word? Onward. Wee. Running parallel to the freeway, I just wanted to check out this little town, Ferdinand. I can take a close look at the spelling once again. These little spots. Main Street, here we go. I wonder what this used to be. Those windows, oh goodness. Maybe a bank. This is where you come and get your appliances fixed. Looks like it. Look at this bar, look at the sign. It's fantastic. We have a country club and a little city hall. I love that it's carved on a wood piece hanging in the back of the post office. The curtains are hanging there in the window. So, I'm so happy. <laughs>
It's just like fun riding. It's overcast, it's eerie. Like I feel like I'm gonna see zombies come out of the field. I had a little cold through here and then it healed and but I cracked, it cracked. And then at night when I drool <laughs> or whatever happens, my lips get stuck together. So like I keep breaking it. So that's why I keep doing this. <laughs> just biking along and then there were dogs. You could sleep in a dog house. Look at the little man. If you want to know more, go to dogbarkpark.com. Cottonwood. Population. Hi, babies. Population 900. That's one place I was going to eat breakfast, but there's a place called C'est La Vie or something that I feel like I want because it looks really different. Seems like there's more than 900 people here. Yay, a hill. I hope I didn't make a mistake. I don't want to go back up that hill for breakfast. Radio Shack, wow. What? Main drag. Uh oh, where your face is on. Oh, well, it's so wide, it loses its cuteness a little. Oh my gosh, a beauty parlor. So, where is this breakfast joint? Oh, oh there it is, C'est la Vie's. Oh gosh, I think I made the wrong choice. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Okay, they're a tiny little joint, nothing fancy inside. $10 in Cottonwood, Idaho for a BLT. Okay, for those of you that don't know what that is, that is bacon, lettuce, and tomato. And let me tell you how much it costs to buy bread, tomato, and lettuce, all right? I've told you this before, that stuff is just like, that immediately makes me, I'm, I'm not gonna give you my money, I'm not gonna eat there. That's like so overpriced, it's ridiculous. That awesome hill I just came down. I'm gonna go back up. We have to go in this store because looking in the window, I feel like I'm going back in time. I just love this stuff. They had a Yahtzee game in the window. Like, look, cowboy hats. This is fantastic. Look at this. Fashionable jewelry. It's an everything store. It's a one-stop shop. It's like how a general store would have been way back in the day. They have dishes, teapots. Limited choice is just how I like it. We're gonna head off for breakfast then. All right, so I'm gonna go with veggies and cheese and pancakes for $10. And I even get toast. Good, delish, awful. <laughs> you see the gray? It's supposed to rain in like an hour. The part that would suck the most about it, when semis go by. I get totally sprayed. I'm hoping to get to Fen. We'll see what happens. Entering Fen. All right, so I wonder if this is the road. No. Here it is, Here's Fen, Idaho. I feel a couple of little drops. Turn off that will save us. I think it shaves off four miles. <laughs> I'm gonna say there's zero shelter. Lake Road. Well, it is what it is, right? I mean, it's dirt. It's gonna get really muddy. Well, I'm gonna go for it. It looks like we're gonna drop down. Famous last words, as my mom would say. Did my lens just fog? That was weird. Look at them mamas! Look at all the mamas! Hi, you guys! Some of you may be wondering, why not just ride in the rain? It might feel great at first, because you're hot from cycling. The minute you stop, it's cold. <laughs> it looks like it already rained there a bunch. There's a big puddle. Oh, you know, that'd be cool if like my shortcut brought me around. And by the way, don't be making fun of my, my $1 raincoat cape. They're freaking awesome. I love them. And out of the blue, there's a little like spot. Like there's my shelter. Oh, but look, more signs. When President Thomas Jefferson sent the Corpse of Discovery West, their scientific checklist included seeking evidence of mammoths. The explorers little suspected that when Sergeant Ordway journeyed past Tolo Lake, he passed the graveyard of several Colombian mammoths. In 1994, a sediment was removed from the lake to improve fish habitat. Mammoth's bones surfaced and eventually over 400 bones were recovered. How the lake formed over 10,000 years ago and why the remains of so many long extinct creatures were concentrated here remains a mystery. 
One possible explanation is that the source of Tolo Lake was artisan. Water coming up through the ground would have created a treacherous and unpredictable surface. However the lake was formed, it was obviously a water source for the large mammals. Clay in the soil held the bones of those who died here. It is super, super cool. It's like an oasis. You know, it's just green. I feel like in the middle of the lake, they should have mammoth bones sticking up out of the water while well, someone would steal them. That's if I didn't take the shortcut. It's really raining out there and it's lightly raining here. And yeah, what was I talking about earlier? How things just happen for me. I'm in the middle of a wheat world and I was just talking about shelter. And of course somebody's ar <laughs> arriving because I just started videoing. There happens to be a picnic table, a roof, and a bathroom within five minutes of it starting to rain. It just cracks me up. <laughs> Here's where Lake Road spits out. Grangeville's that way. We're headed this way. I see a, a juicy little climb up ahead. Now it's muggy out. I sweat my ass off on this climb. With, with hay. It's hot. Well, these are just two lanes, so people can get over. Somebody said there's no climb. Oh, you kind of go along, drop right into Warbird, White Bird. Yeah, you just drop right in. I just had a moth stuck to my lip. Oh my god, that's freaky. I had a moth go in my mouth once. It came right out. Oh my gosh, it goes on. Oh, cat. Ah, oh, cat. 7% grade, it's supposed to be tight and twisty, but I am on a 2.2 tire. So what I will be doing here is getting off my bicycle and I will be checking all the straps, my bags, pack this away, put these away, check my tires over. I do have a little slice in one of them. I put this shoe goo over it and it's been sealed from the inside from the uh, tubeless goop, whatever it's called. I just had a really sad thought. This might be our last wee. I mean, we're gonna have other wees, but not like this one. It's like six miles long. It could be wrong on this six. It could be eight. <laughs> I'm gonna go fast. I'm gonna be careful though. I'm always very careful. I put a long sleeve shirt on. <laughs> not that it's gonna do anything if I hit pavement, but just in case I get a chill, I didn't want anything, my muscles to tighten or anything. The road looks like it's in beautiful condition. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. See you at the bottom. I think I can take you for a little ride. Field site. I thought it was going to be at the bottom of this drop. This ride is ridiculous. Oh my gosh, look how much more we get to go down. Well, this is cool. For 60 years after construction was completed in 1915, Whitebird Grade across the valley served Idaho City North South Highway. Many tortuous curves and switchbacks, which, if placed together, made 37 complete circles, let the old road climb 2,900 feet in 14 miles gaining an elevation of 4,429 at its summit. That route represented a significant engineering and construction achievement. This new grade did not replace it until 1975. All right, what do we have here? Some douchebag left their trash here. It's so nice to read about the Indians. You probably hear about the Holocaust like 90% of the time. I mean, the Indians we hear about 3% of the time. To both sides, the conflict was about land but their perceptions of land were very different. These hills with their streams and rich grasses are a small part of a once 17 million acre homeland where the Nez Perce lived for thousands of years. 
seeing other uses for the land, waves of miners, farmers, and loggers swept into Nez Perce country, of course, because they kept it amazing, and then all the assholes came in to steal it away from them. The Treaty of 1855 designated a portion of the original Nez Perce homeland as a reservation. After gold was discovered, the Treaty of 1863 reduced the size of the reservation by 90%. Many Nez Perce did not recognize the terms of what they considered the Steel Treaty and refused to leave, as they should have, their home valleys. Injustice and violence arising from the treaty led ultimately to the conflict at this site. Here's the White Bird Battlefield. If you've been standing here at dawn on June 17, 1877, you would have seen columns of U.S. Army cavalry and local volunteers riding down the slopes to your left. Nez Perce teepees stood along the stream valley the troopers' intent was to bring a few warriors to justice and to persuade the Indians to move onto the reservation. A small delegation of Nez Perce approached, carrying a white flag. You would have heard several gunshots fired for unknown reasons. Then intense firing erupted all along the ridge. Within 10 minutes, the cavalry and volunteers began retreating up these slopes, running for their lives. After this one-sided rout, war became inevitable. Wow, look at the size of these logs, these trees. Well, that was fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was one of my favorite downhills. I would have really loved it on the road bike. Then it dumps you into this terrain that's just bizarre. Think of this lumpy, bumpy hills. Now we're gonna go right up against the Salmon River. There's something about the way they do the gravel that it leaves like this one smooth strip. I just stay right on it. I don't know why I'm squeezing my left brake. It doesn't work at all. And I'm sure it's gonna be like an easy adjustment when I bring the bike in the bike shop. Riggins is like 28 miles away. It's 2.30, so I should be fine. I'm gonna get to, that's my plan is to go to Riggins. How beautiful is that? The condition of the keep forgetting the name, the breakdown lane, whatever, is really full of stuff. Oh my gosh, look at that awesome beach. Cabin rentals below. One of many logging trucks. See on the left, up on the grassy area, you see that sign up to there, Adventure Stop? I love that marketing. I see the word ice cream. Look at those little plates here. <laughs> junk food here we go again with my issue with pricing is a regular size little Hershey bar is a dollar 69 okay that's like ridiculous beer they have a little bit of everything and they have adventures I've never seen this in any store so I'm paying the premium to have the experience <laughs> Charge your phone whenever you can. So I just ask them to charge, uh, even with just for 10 minutes. Because there's been so many moments when I'm like, oh, I have some power left. Or, oh, even when I was eating breakfast, I, I only used like a quarter of my battery. And I'm thinking, ah, oh, yeah, I have the whole day ahead of me. I should have charged it. Whenever you can, plug it in. We are in the Nez Perce National Forest. Look at this. Naomi's way. Whether I'm in a car or on a bicycle, I love the routes I end up taking, and they're not pre-planned. Some 15 million years ago, Salmon River ran across great Miocene lava flows above here and started to carve this deep canyon. Then this part of the Earth's surface gradually rose. As the mountains were rising, the river cut down into the older rock below. Many other northwestern rivers cut similar gorges. The snake flows through Hell's Canyon, deepest of them all. Oh my gosh, I am just like in heaven. I'm just, I'm just so in awe of this terrain. Like look at these, these mountains. I'm in this cool spot in the United States of America that I didn't know existed. I just pulled over in Lucille, which is right up there. And there was a Cow Creek sign. Like there was a campground. A woman was pulling with her car. I asked her where it was 
And she said, oh, it hasn't been in existence for 10 years. 10 years, and they still have the sign out there with the triangle. Asked her if there was another one. Excuse my sugar, I might have like a pink mouth right now from eating that cotton candy. And I chugged a Pepsi, I ate a bag of cotton candy, and I'm finishing the gummy fish. Ah. <laughs> and she said there's one five miles heading south, and then there's one 10 miles, like right before um, Riggins. So that's nice. And then I literally two minutes later, I see this, and there's no little triangle. I just was curious if it was if you could camp here. There goes Jim. He's lived in Lucille for 20 years. There's only like a population of 50. And he told me that these have fresh water from the well. It's not from the river. And, and I was so thirsty. He said, yeah, I saw you, but I was driving a black Jeep. How did you like that, da that ride down to Whitebird? I'm thinking, wow, that was way back there. I went home and I'm taking my truck out because I put a new thermostat in it. I'm like, that's the same girl I saw coming down that hill. He had some land, he and his wife somewhere, he was saying I could go stay on to Riggins and then there's a climb and there's some hot springs. And I go, it sounds like a lot of climb. He goes, well, yeah, and there's some rocks and stuff. I'm like, no, 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 I'm gonna just stay. I love these people. A lot of them are older and they're just living in these small towns for so many years. And anyway, it was great that he told me about water because I'm really thirsty. Well, that was awesome. I just took a, What's it called? A poor man's shower or something? <laughs> I did my sockies. See? See, I always wash my feet. Like, your feet, I feel like a lot of people get sick if they're out camping and stuff. They don't take care of their feet. Every night, I pretty much stream or whatever. I can at least rinse them off in between the toes around the nails and stuff. I wash my shoes. And that was soap. I'm just, you know, squeezing them, rinsing them, squeezing them, rinsing them. I wash my arms, my legs. My cry deep pants or at the other pump around the corner. <laughs> The cars couldn't see me. I got my armpits, I'm good. <laughs> I'm clean. It's so funny how you just feel like almost like a burst of energy. I'm gonna just keep pedaling. It's so beautiful out right now. Hopefully I don't have to go all the way to Reagan's. They, they were sort of contradicting. The woman was sort of saying there was a campsite. The guy I just spoke to was like, I don't think there's a campground. I think the next one's in Riggins. So considering that the two people live in Lucille, the same town of like nobody. <laughs> and it's only down the road. It is interesting that there's still confusion as to whether there's a campground or not. <laughs> I'm gonna hope that the woman is right. Gosh, I love this road. There's literally another one like two seconds past called Old Lucille, but I don't know about camping. I hear a truck next to me and I look over and it's Joe! <laughs> no, bye Joe! <laughs> Thank you. He pulled over to just check on me again. These people, they're just bored. And I'm a great conversationalist. They like chatting with me. I make them laugh and they make me laugh. The woman was right. Here's a sight. He was wrong. It's tiny, but it's cute. Huh, wonder if I should take it or should I keep going? It's so beautiful I'm gonna keep going. Lightning Creek. Neither party mentioned this one. I still could keep going. I just don't want to risk it. Let's go check it out. So there's a porta potty, and the guy right there is sitting in his chair butt naked. Do I keep going? Oh, I think I'm gonna keep going. Oh, wait a minute. Bug just went up my nose. Oh, there's a pretty beach. So, you know what? I think I am gonna stop here. Walking back to my spot, to set up my tent, I looked down and almost stepped on this beautiful snake. Look at him, he's got pink. Look at you, beautiful thing. Well, I'm gonna leave you be. I like to watch you move though, and I know the minute I try to step over, you're probably gonna move. So I'm gonna go around the back of you. Where are you going? No, I'm letting you go first. Oh my goodness, you're so beautiful. And this is what I did. I'm not using my sleeping pad. I'm not using my rain fly. I just put the rain jacket on for a little privacy because we have people there. So there's that truck. There's the road. I don't know if somebody's in there or not. I can't tell. The naked guy's on the other side. I don't think, oh, here comes a guy rafting. Oh my gosh, look. Maybe this is the guy who has the truck. Wait for it. Oh my gosh. Two little doggies balanced on the front. Maybe he's the guy with, yeah, I wonder if he's the guy with the truck. What I was about to say doesn't matter because I was gonna say that I didn't really want people to see a girl here. But now that I know he's Mr. Doggy Man, we're good. Like I even put my hair up, well it's kind of falling down now. Cause he's just blonde, flowing. You just gotta do little things to play it safe. So anyway, so that's cool. I got a nude guy, I'm not worried about it, and I got a doggy guy. We're good. 
time to eat. Mini bagels, peanut butter, and look at Mr. Honey Bear. Dog man left. So now it's just me and naked man. Naked man. Something about sand makes you feel like you're on vacation. Laying down on the sand is gonna feel really nice. I figured I'd let you join me for when I have my experience on laying on sand. So it feels like it's nice inside, like my heels go down, it's soft, it feels nice. So let's see. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. You guess it. The curse of the fucking rain fly. I don't put it on and it starts to rain. It is unbelievable. So yes, I had to crawl out. I had my clothes laying out that I rinsed off to dry. Dig out the rain fly. There were so many bugs in my face. I don't know what it is. It's totally different from the woods. Thousands. Going up my nose and my eyes. I actually had to take my headlamp Put it on the ground and now of course they were on me so they're in some are in the tent i see them now there's a lot that came in 